was very close to him and he died just 11 days after Bobby won this race last year. As I said, we're in the pit area here and it's hard to describe it. All this began uh, at 6 o'clock this morning when the gates opened. It's more than a race, it's a whole day here. When we arrived at 10 minutes to 7, some people, a few, but some people were already s sitting in their assigned seats in the grandstand. Since then, they've been listening to the Purdue University marching band and Ohio State band came by a while ago. A great deal of pageantry here and this is the most beautiful day that I can remember. More than that, I talked to Sam Hanks, who has driven and been here for heaven knows how many years. He said he cannot remember a day as beautiful as this for the running of the Indianapolis 500. Temperature is 66 degrees. Uh, there's no wind. Should be good for the engines and for everybody else. Let's take a look at one of the cars now. Not the cars up on the first row at this moment, but here is car number 87. That is the car of Steve Chassis. We wanted to find out about this young man because he's an interesting person. And we talked not to him, but to his eight-year-old son, Blaine. And here's what Blaine had to say. Hi, I'm Wayne Chassie. My father is Steve Chassie, and he'll be driving car number 87 today. My grandfather got my dad started in racing, and in 1964, he built his first race car. Shortly after that, my dad went to Vietnam and got a medal for bravery. I'm proud of my dad because he saved 10 guys' lives. My dad's a really good looking guy. About nine years ago, he was a model. And this year, he's in the fashion show with me. And he's modeling up for a coat. Lydia Lockery, my dad's car owner, has given my dad a chance to run the Indy 500. I love it, I love it, I love it! She's the only woman to own a car here at the Indianapolis 500. My mom gets really nervous in the, when my dad starts starting going in the first turn. She thinks he's going to crash and spin or something. But I don't get nervous because I know he's a good driver and he won't crash. In 1983, my dad finished 11 in the race, and now I didn't go there. And I can't wait to see what happens this year's 500. I want to be a race car just like Dad. Oh, no way. In the house. Here are the proud parents of Blaine Chassis, Gina and Steve Chassis. Steve, you're starting in the last row today. What are your best hopes for what you can accomplish? Well, I think that uh, if things go the way we have them planned, we should be uh, in the top ten at the end of the race. We hope to run all day and, and use the yellows correctly and uh, just continue moving up to the field. But I plan on, on laying off for a couple of laps, maybe three laps, just to let them get strung out and and see what happens in the turbulence in front of me. We can perhaps guess from the tone of Blaine's voice how important this race is to you. But tell me a little bit about the trips across America, running through Indianapolis with your dad, and, and those thoughts as you look ahead to the race today. Oh, I, at this, this point in time, I'm not thinking much about that. But I, I travel all across the Midwest with my father and had been to every racetrack in the Midwest before I ever came back here. But since this is the largest race in the world and, and the, uh, I think the most important race in the world, I'm just, uh, even though I'm starting the last row, I feel real pleased because with 33 drivers in the world starting this race today, I'm one of them. So that's an that's accomplishment I can be proud of. Okay, and Gina, we hope to chat with you later. Have a good day. And as Jack Whitaker would say, have a good trip. Thank you, Steve. Back to you, Jim. A good trip. A good trip is, in fact, the first prerequisite in the Indianapolis 500. They're milling in the infield, in the pits. They've come from all over the world. This race is being televised to some 40 countries live today. Much more to come. <laughs>